One of the things beginners discover when starting a woodworking hobby is that there are different types of woodworking. Figuring out what interests you will spare you from having to spend a lot of money on tools and equipment that you don't really need. In this video, I'll break down the four woodworking approaches to help you determine which style is right for you. Keep in mind, these are very broad categories and there can be plenty of overlap between them depending on the individual. Think of these more as your general philosophy towards woodworking. I'll start with traditional power tool woodworking because this is the most common and most accessible approach. It's the type of woodworking seen most on YouTube channels, including this one. And traditional may seem like an odd word to apply to power tools, but power tools have dominated the home workshop for well over 50 years. At this point, it's the de facto entry point for most hobbyists. I use the word traditional to distinguish it from computer-assisted power tools. As a power tool woodworker, you can easily set up a functional workshop in a fairly limited space and start building fantastic projects and furniture in a very short period of time. Out of all four of the woodworking styles, this one has the shortest learning curve. A typical power tool shop will have a table saw at its heart, along with other various handheld or stationary saws. Woodworkers will use power sanders, power drills, and drivers. Some shops will add a bandsaw or a joiner or a planer. I have a video discussing the seven essential tools that beginners need right up here. There's an enormous range of options when it comes to power tools with an equally wide range of prices. You can easily spend more than $50,000 on tools for a garage workshop, but it doesn't have to be that way. Be sure to download my free guide for getting all the tools you need for under $1,000 over at mytoollist.com. Probably the biggest drawback to power tool woodworking is that it has a greater risk of injury than the other forms of woodworking. You can cut a finger off in a split second on a table saw while you'd have to be pretty determined to cut a finger off using a hand saw. Plus, there are other potential hazards such as kickback, eye injuries, hearing loss, and lung damage associated with power tools. But all of this doesn't have to be a deal breaker. There are methods to reduce all of these risks which you just have to implement. I've been woodworking for over 40 years and I've never had a life-altering injury because I take safety and safety procedures very seriously. If you're the type of person who loves quiet, contemplative, solitary activities, hand tool woodworking might be for you. Hand tool woodworkers use traditional human powered tools and joinery techniques that have been around for hundreds, even thousands of years. Hand saws, hand planes, axes, knives, and chisels. Most hand tool woodworkers made the decision to shun electric tools in order to better connect with the process of building and to better enjoy the experience of woodworking. Although not exclusive to hand tool woodworkers, the finished project may not be as important or as interesting as the road getting to it. Hand tool woodworking could be the most personally rewarding approach to the craft. There's a lot to be said for working with traditional hand tools. They're quiet and deliberate and they don't produce clouds of sawdust like power tools. And while you can certainly get some nasty injuries if you aren't careful, hand tools come with a lot less risk of serious injury than power tools. The cost of entry into hand tool woodworking can be pretty low, but be aware that quality precision hand tools can be very expensive, especially as you build up a collection of various saws and planes to perform specific tasks. I wouldn't recommend setting up a hand tool workshop solely because you assume it's gonna be more affordable. If your goal is to start cranking out furniture right away, hand tool woodworking might not be for you. Out of all of the disciplines, hand tool woodworking requires the most time and patience to learn and to build your skills and craftsmanship. Getting quality results is a highly rewarding personal journey for a lot of people and working so close to the lumber offers a much needed escape from all of the screens and technology that surround us. If this sounds good to you and you're interested in taking on the most challenging form of woodworking, there's a number of quality YouTube channels to help you out. I suggest you check out Paul Sellers, Rex Kruger, or Wood by Wright. I'll include links to all of these down in the description. 
If you're interested in design and love working with computers, you might be interested in pursuing the newest form of woodcraft, digital woodworking. In a digital-based shop, individual pieces of a project are designed using CAD software and sent to a CNC, a laser cutter, or a 3D carving machine. Woodworking robots are also emerging to perform additional tasks such as sanding. But probably the biggest misconception about digital woodworking is that the machine does all the work at the press of a button, while machines can cut wood very precisely and with more intricacy than human-powered tools, building and assembling a project will still require your hands and traditional tools. So a tech shop will most likely still need a table saw, sanders, clamps, and other machinery. Digital woodworkers are often project-focused. In other words, they might be more interested in completing a furniture piece or other project as efficiently as possible rather than the process itself. It's about conceiving of a design and seeing it realized in the real world, sometimes in ways that just can't really be achieved with traditional tools. This can be just as satisfying and rewarding to some people as building with hand tools is to other people. It's real woodworking, but just a different approach. But of course, the biggest drawback to digital woodworking is mostly its cost. As the tools become more and more commonplace in home workshops, the prices will come down. We're already seeing this right now with the affordability of some CNC machines, and you're seeing these in home workshops. But mostly digital woodworking is seen today in professional production shops where these tools can pay for themselves. There's also a bit of a learning curve to using the software, but you can still get up to speed making projects relatively quickly. Many woodworkers take a pragmatic approach to woodworking, using whatever tool gets the job done best, or they want to explore new tools and techniques simply out of curiosity. Some hand tool focused woodworkers, for example, might not be interested in the drudgery of milling lumber by hand, so they'll use an electric planer to square up rough boards, allowing them to focus their skills on the finer points of cutting and shaping wood and hand cutting joints. Some power tool woodworkers enjoy using hand planes and card scrapers to smooth the face of a board rather than generating clouds of sanding dust. In some cases, using a plane is actually faster and can yield better results. And as I mentioned before, many power tool hobbyists are supplementing their workshops with digital tools for various reasons, sometimes simply because they offer new challenges and new ways to build. However you choose to approach woodworking, you're going to find that it's a very satisfying hobby that'll always pose new challenges and there's always new skills that you can learn. Thanks for watching.